Seeing the economy on the verge of collapse, I did the logical thing. I sought to profit from it. In doing so, I gained a new level of insight into how Wall Street really works. Imagine that it's the end of the year 2008, and within a few more weeks, you make $100 million for yourself and another $700 million for your investors by betting on the collapse of the American real estate market. This is the story of Michael Burry, one of the most famous American traders and investors. Were your investors as confident? He made $725 million, I think, on the funds in 2007. There are investors who made tens of millions off this and uh, were still pretty upset. Why should this matter to you today? Well, according to Burry's report, he expects the same market downturn today as he anticipated in 2008 and is betting a significant amount of money on this stock market crash. Not just his own money, but also that of his investors, totaling $1.6 billion. Presumably, he expects that the catastrophe and crash that occurred in 2008 will repeat this year in 2023. And we'll take a look at this because not everything is as it seems in mainstream media or what you read online. Hello, we are Invest Guide, and welcome to another investment video. But we won't focus solely on Burry, because in America, there's a law that requires you to disclose every three months what you've done with the over $100 million you manage for your investors, what you've bought, what you've sold, and how you've managed these funds. So in this video, we'll also examine all of these billionaires, fund managers, and super investors and delve beneath the surface, as some of the changes they've made in their assets and funds could be important for you too. You know the saying, there are a thousand reasons to sell stocks, but only one when you're buying, to make a profit. And personally, I believe that learning from the ideas and actions of these super investors and portfolio managers is the best thing we can do if we want to become better investors ourselves. Let's get into it. Michael Burry has once again stirred up the investment pond worldwide because, according to his recent disclosures, he purchased so-called put options in his fund. These options essentially say that if stock prices go down, you'll make a royal profit. In simple terms, he's betting on a stock market crash and stands to make huge profits from it. Burry is betting on the crash of both the S&P 500 index, which includes the 500 largest American companies, and the Nasdaq 100 index, which mainly consists of massive technology stocks rather than smaller ones. He's placing bets with put options totaling $1.6 billion, currently constituting about 90% of his portfolio, or rather his fund's portfolio. So it could be said that he's quite confident in this bet. He probably thinks he'll profit royally, just like he did in the past, in 2008 and 2009. But wait, there's something we need to clarify. We don't know all the details, when these options expire, what fees he paid for these options, and of course, what the target price of these options is. Without these details, we can't fully judge all his ideas. Burry might be heavily in the negative on this trade now, but he could also be significantly in the positive, as we don't know the purchase timing, the target price, and so on. Furthermore, when we look at his fund's portfolio, we notice that Burry is consistently selling and buying, behaving more like a trader than an investor. Just look at the number of buys and sells he's made in the last three months. We'll compare this with Warren Buffett's approach, which we'll cover right after him. But first, Let's talk about what we, as investors, can take away from this portfolio. Burry likely believes that current American stock prices are significantly overvalued, hence his 90% bet on their decline. However, we mustn't forget that he's been wrong before, and his recent misstep wasn't too long ago. In January of this year, he tweeted, sell, but two months later at the end of March, he apologized for that tweet, saying he was mistaken. If you had followed Burry in January, you would have missed out on gains of tens of percent, as the stock market has been performing quite well. My portfolio alone is up over 31% since the beginning of the year, excluding dividends. So while Burry is an experienced investor and trader, his actions and thoughts might not be as applicable for retail investors like me or you, as his numerous trades and the lack of insight into his details make it difficult to draw conclusions. I believe he's not as predictable as our next investor, someone we can learn much more from. And that, of course, is the legendary Warren Buffett, in my opinion, the best investor to have ever lived in modern history. And why do I think that? Because while many portfolio managers can grow rapidly, yes, you can make 300%, 200% in three years, remember Kathy Wood? They can also make one big mistake and burn 75% or 80% of their portfolio or their fund's portfolio. 
It's easy to shoot up quickly, but you can also fall just as fast. However, over his more than 60-year history in the markets, Warren Buffett never had such an incident. He never exposed his investors to such risk that would require their portfolios, and thus his portfolio, to recover for several years. And that's something incredibly demanding and also extremely rare. That's why he's a legend. When we look at his current portfolio, we see extreme concentration in a few positions. And Buffett himself has said this in the past. Diversification is a protection against ignorance. Buffett currently holds 51% of his public portfolio in Apple, which is a massive concentration. However, we need to clarify one thing that many people might not know. That's why I'm talking about his public portfolio, as his company Berkshire Hathaway also owns dozens of smaller private businesses, which of course have value but aren't traded on the stock market. So, the 51% isn't 51% of his entire wealth, but the percentage is lower. Nevertheless, it's still a significant position, amounting to over $177 billion. Looking at his recent purchases and sales, there hasn't been much change in his portfolio. When you examine the value of these trades, it's quite small and doesn't really matter. They account for only a fraction of a percent of the whole portfolio. Notice one thing. Buffett hasn't sold a single share of Apple, even though many investors say that Apple is expensive. High P.E. Lack of growth. Let's see how Apple isn't growing. Let's take a look at Yahoo Finance and its financial results. Look at the year-over-year -year revenue growth and profit growth. Apple's profits have been growing by about 20% annually over the past five years. It's definitely not a stagnant company. Personally, I believe that Apple's stock price will grow faster than the entire S&P 500 index in the next decade, and that's why I'm not selling. I have it in my portfolio, and I think Buffett is not selling for the same reason. If he believed otherwise, he probably wouldn't hold such a substantial value in it. Another favorite super investor and portfolio manager of mine is Bill Ackman, whose investment strategy is quite clear. We look for very high quality businesses, uh, what we describe as simple, predictable, free cash flow generative, dominant businesses, a, a business that Warren Buffett would describe as having a moat around it. If you believe that the value of anything, financial, is the present value of the cash you can take out of it over its life, well, you need to know what how much cash is going to generate over its life. So, the, so business quality to us is the single most important criterion for determining what's... Bill manages $10 billion and has a highly concentrated portfolio. One thing to note is that he has sold a significant portion of his Lowe's Holdings, which is a retail hardware store chain. Looking at its performance over the last five years, it's quite high, so it can be assumed that Bill is simply taking profits and pocketing them. Another surprising move is that Ackman has been buying Google for the second consecutive quarter. It now makes up about 12% of his portfolio. Other trades are small and insignificant. When we examine his entire portfolio, we see that Ackman focuses heavily on the restaurant business. Whether it's Chipotle, an excellent company with a large margin and a competitive advantage, or QSR, which encompasses several major fast food brands and companies like Burger King. Ackman also made a substantial profit in the past by selling Starbucks, buying and selling the Starbucks coffee chain. Let's continue with another highly underrated super investor, someone you probably wouldn't immediately think of, Bill Gates. Bill Gates isn't just a great entrepreneur, a multi-billionaire who, of course, founded Microsoft. He got rich from it, but he's also an adept investor and a very good friend of Warren Buffett. Bill is an outstanding investor who managed to not only protect the billions he earned but also multiply them through his investments. His highest positions in his portfolio are truly solid. He holds the most money in Microsoft, which makes a lot of sense. Microsoft is one of the highest quality companies, with a higher credit rating than the United States itself. This means that if you were to potentially choose whether to lend your money to Microsoft or the US government, you should correctly choose Microsoft. It has a higher credit rating, which implies a greater likelihood that Microsoft will repay your money compared to the US government. This level of security in Microsoft is also the largest investment in his friend Warren Buffett's company, Berkshire Hathaway. It makes sense when they talk, right? This is uh, July 5th, 1991. We didn't know why we were meeting each other until we met each other. <laughs> and third are the Canadian National Railways, which is essentially a company that can't go bankrupt because it's one of the largest railways in Canada, without which probably half of Canada wouldn't be able to function at all. As I mentioned earlier, 
Bill has an extremely concentrated portfolio with three or four main positions that are also very defensive but have the potential to grow nicely in the future. So, it's a very intelligently composed portfolio, which makes a lot of sense given his position. What we've actually seen is that each of these super investors has their own style. Some are more aggressive, some are more defensive, some have billions in five or six individual stock positions, while others have 50. For you, the most important thing is to create your own style that suits you and from which you'll potentially benefit and that will be your own. And remember, in your life, you only need to do a few things right, as long as you don't do many things wrong. Well, if you'd like to learn how to invest and let your money work for you, I'll be looking forward to seeing you on Patreon. You'll find company analyses, weekly reports, and much more there. Take care.